Hey guys, this is Tori Cushing with Blue Glass, and today I'm just going to run through a quick Excel tutorial on how to do different drop down menus. The first one is going to be using data validation. Now, I use this with the different months of the year because sometimes that gets confusing when, some, when people abbreviate July as GUL or something like that. So, to start this off, we need to create a list of months. I did this already in Sheet 2. I like to do this in a second sheet over and then end up hiding the sheet at the end of the document. That way we can reference it in the data validation but not have to see it. Okay, so what I did was just create a list of months and then once I selected the list of months, I named the range. This is really simple to do. You just go up into the left corner up in here and name it. Just like that. I already did this and I named mine months. So now I go back over to my list of options in my table. I select them and I go up into data. And then I select data validation. Now there are a whole bunch of different options that you can use in data validation. Today I'm just going to really focus on the list. So you select the list and then you go to the source. You can either enter it manually by just entering the named range or you could go and actually select it. So I go to sheet 2 and I select the months. Now the cool thing about this is that you can also enter in your own personalized error alerts. So you can say that you can either warn them that they're entering the wrong set of data or you can actually make them stop and enter in your own message. I have to stop it. You did that wrong. Okay. So now when you select one of the cells from this range it'll give you the options of all the months. Now let's say I want to change something in my list. So let's say I abbreviated March to MAR. I could go back in and it'll automatically update on its own. So my drop down menu will actually show MAR instead of March. It's a cool little tip. Okay now if I were to enter in let's say GUL instead of July my custom error message would come up and say stop it you did that wrong. So I'm just going to cancel, goes back to July. So for the second part of this tutorial, you're going to have to make sure that your developer tab is viewable. You can see that mine isn't right now. So what you're going to do is you're just going to go up into the ribbon, right click, customize the ribbon. Then on the right hand side, you're going to have an option to click on developer. So hit OK. There you go. There's the developer tab. OK, so next we're going to insert a form control. The one I'm using right now is a combo box. The cool thing about this is that you can set up the size of your combo box and you can even show how many options, I'm sorry, how many rows you can show in, in your drop down menu. So you just right click, go to form control, then controls, and you would input your range. So I'm going to select all the sources. Now I like to link this to a cell. So whenever I click on, let's say Google, it'll output it to, we can click this cell. Okay, so let's say that I wanted to show 10 different drop down lines. Now when I click on this, it'll show me all of my options. Whereas when I go to data validation, you have to scroll through to see all the options. Now I'm going to actually, what I usually like to do is, is set up the output cell to be right behind the combo box. Now you can just do this by right clicking on it and going into format control. Then cell link, I'm going to move it to D16. Okay. Okay, so lastly we're going to do an ActiveX control. This is a combo box using ActiveX instead of form. So we're going to start this off by naming our range over here. I named it all the source. Okay, then you're going to go back to the month sheet and you're going to go to insert combo box and it's going to be under the ActiveX controls, not the form controls. So once you do that, you just draw out your box and then you can start to actually format it. You're just going to right click and go to properties. 
and go down to list fill range all the sources and then you'll want to link this uh, combo box to a specific cell so I'm going to pick uh, D19 there we go and it automatically updates the tricky thing about ActiveX control is that you have something called design mode when you want to change anything about this control box you have to go into design mode and then if you want to actually access it instead of just being able to click away and then click on it again you have to turn off design mode okay then you have all your options now I don't like the fact that you have to scroll so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click end design mode click on the box go back to properties and make the list row 10 instead of 8 and I just close it out turn off design mode Ah, there they are all 10 of them another cool thing about the ActiveX control is that you can go in and edit the size of the text or even the style that the text is in so if I want to change the font from Calibri to something bigger or smaller or formatted to the rest of your document then I could change it in here so let's say I, my whole document was in Times New Roman for example and I can make it Times New Roman and I can make it size 12 or 14 and it'll automatically update it. You can also change the colors of it which is a really cool aspect. Once you close out and then you turn off design mode. Aha! There it is. The color choice probably wasn't the best but you get the idea. The cool thing about that is you can't do that with either the form control or the data validation. So if you have a document that you really want to have completely formatted but also have a drop down box, ActiveX control is the way to go. Okay, so I really hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions or comments, you can either post on this YouTube video or you can post on the actual blog post itself. I'll have a live link in the description. Thanks.